It is time once again for the weekly closes on our favorite Bitcoin miners. And before we get going here, smash that like button, subscribe if you've been with us for a while and haven't done so yet. And don't forget to check out the Trade Cave store on Etsy, link in the description and the channel bio. Let's get going. Bit farms here. So we are up 10.28% this week um, and we closed at 2, 279 here uh, on the weekly. Now, I don't necessarily care for the candle as it has come out this week. We'll take a look here. It's got a nice long wick on top. I don't like seeing that. Uh, it looks a little too much like this candle here from uh, June 17th that followed by that was followed by a pretty dramatic sell off where we went down, you know, 17% before finding this week's green uh, movement for us. Now, this is looking something like a double top sort of scenario here. Now, I'm not calling it yet. I'm not saying that's what's happening, but I am saying that Bitcoin was up big uh, this week and BitFarms is not up that big, at least by comparison to what Bitcoin was doing. And if we get back below 250, we will be looking at a return to $2 pretty quickly if that is to happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying I don't love this formation as it is, especially since this week here, we have this nice long wick on top and it did not go higher. We did not make a higher high than that previous high from the week of June 17th. So this is showing a little bit of weakness and I don't necessarily like it. We will need to see what happens next week to get a feel for whether or not it's going to go up or down here. But what we can see is that we are right on the midline for the uh, Fib Bollinger Bands. Let me turn off my drawings here, which is this fuchsia line here, which is at 270. So we're right above that. Right below that, we do have some support at 250. But if we lose that, we're coming down big in a big way. I mean, it's all the way down here. 118 is where they, the ATR band is at the bottom end. On the top end of here, we have an ATR at 342. But if you look to the history here, to the past, uh, in December 26th, as well as uh, February 12th, like we were above that, you know, at, at our peak, we were well above the top ATR band. And we've done it that once, two, two, three times just in the last year. Last July, we even went above it. So I wouldn't be surprised. Like, uh, just because I don't like the, the, the current candle formation, I wouldn't say that this is bearish until it's under 250. Uh, on the other side of things, the last three times we did a run-up, we went well above the uh, red ATR band, which is currently at 342. And if we went well above it, I'd be looking somewhere around 360, almost $4 on bit farms if we get a decent enough run-up here. Um, I would like to see it go further. I mean, we got a wicked run up from, you know, 150 all the way to 327. I mean, that's more than a 100% move right there from May through June. And, and we even got a little pop up here in July. So I mean, that was a summer run that happened. It did happen as, as we said it on the channel, it happened. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure where it's going to go from here. Now that does, it could continue to go up. It could, if it breaks 250 though, I'm, I'm calling it down. All right. That's all I got to say about that. Let's see. Bit Digital. How's Bit Digital doing this week? We printed a doji at the top of the channel here. Now, I don't hate that, but I don't love it either. Uh, I do want to see next week. I want to see some green. Next week, I want to see it go up above 405-ish. Um, yeah, I want to see it go up above like 405 here next week. Uh, otherwise, I'm not too in love with this movement, uh, that, that one specifically on the weekly. The daily was looking really good, but the weekly, I mean, we are overbought pretty badly on the weekly. Now, there is some news coming out this weekend. This isn't a, a political channel, uh, but a political channel, but sometimes politics does impact what we're talking about here. And over the weekend, Biden is expected to exit the race. Now, if he does that, that would likely be very good for crypto as well as crypto based assets like bit digital, or, you know, Bitcoin miners. Uh, so and that is because he's pretty anti crypto or, you know, he's shown quite frequently that he is anti crypto. Him stepping out of the race would be good for these stocks specifically. Uh, and then you also have next week for this stock specifically, the Ethereum ETFs are coming out. They're like, they're, they are expected to start trading Tuesday. That would be good for this one. We have the, the weekend. So next weekend, uh, Trump will be speaking again, not a political channel, but sometimes politics intersects with what we're doing here. Trump will be um, doing a speech, I guess, at the uh, Bitcoin convention where it is expected and it may or may not happen. It might be a sell the news event, but 
he is expected to mention something about a Bitcoin reserve uh, with the U.S. government, which would be ultra bullish for Bitcoin and anything Bitcoin related. So, you know, a couple of really bullish things coming out here um, for us in the next week, to be honest, in relation to our Bitcoin miners. Now, we'll see if they keep up with Bitcoin. I mean, this might just affect Bitcoin. Like, uh, you know, Friday, Bitcoin was up 5%, but our miners were, were not up by that much. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But there are some positive catalysts for Bitcoin in the near future. Anyways, this close. Don't don't love it. Don't hate it. It's a doji. This is indecision. It's telling us nothing. Basically, this is telling us nothing. I would wait for the five-day moving average to interact with price. And when that happens, probably at about 363 here, that's what I'm saying. Probably 363. Uh, and I, I'll put this one right here. This is where I think price is going to interact with the five-day moving average. That is where we will find out if we're coming all the way down to this yellow band at 289, which will probably be at $3 by the time we get there, or if we're going to continue going up. That's going to be the line in the sand for coming back to three bucks or continuing on is that uh, 363 area where the five day moving average on Monday will likely meet price and we'll see what price does with it there. All right, let's go look at Clean Spark. Clean Spark, you are just all over the place. You don't know what to do. I hate this candle. Oof. I do not like this candle whatsoever. I don't know what that is. Uh, this candle is just like that Bitfarms candle that I mentioned. I hate that. That is a long a long wick on top. The body is not very big and, and hanging out towards the bottom as we're in the middle of a move here. I don't like that at all. That reminds me of this candle here from uh, April 22nd, as well as this candle here from May 20, May 20th, as well as this candle you know, to a certain extent from March 25th. And they, what do they all have in common? A big drop right after right down to 15 bucks. I still feel like CleanSpark could hit $15, even though Friday was a pretty good day for it and kind of went against what I was thinking before. Now, let me look at the volume. How's the volume doing on this thing? Volume on the weekly. Oh, not, what is going on here? Oh, I'm drawing. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm, I'm, making, I'm making lines here. Excuse me while I make art. Um, now, volume is dropping. Red, so, so sell volume is beginning to drop on the weekly. That's good. RSI is climbing up. It is in bull territory, but it's been in bull territory many times before, before it came down. Now, the thing that is different here that has me a little bit concerned is that RSI did cross over the signal line, and that happened just this week. Probably just happened in the last two days, to be honest. So RSI went over the signal line. That is bullish. I hate this candle, but this is bullish. Now, the thing that could undo this bull momentum is if Clean Spark does more dilution, like if they're not done diluting yet, they may let it get creep back up to, you know, $19, $20 and then go back hard on the dilution back down to $16, $15. Now we might see um, something like, you know, the five day moving average, $16.60 be our floor for a while here. Uh, but it's hard to say what's going to happen here. I think it's going to completely rely on whether or not Clean Spark decides to dilute further, but we do see volume turning up. We do see on the weekly RSI is in a good place. I probably should not have done those covered calls. Um, and I will probably lose out on some upside because of that decision. That's okay, though. Like I've said in uh, yesterday's video, uh, I'm, I'm deeply in profit on my CleanSpark, even if I sell at $20, the, you know, the, the very few covered calls that I did sell. If they end up striking at $20, I, I mean, I, I'll have that premium plus the... Um, Plus, plus the uh, profit, uh, you know, more than 100% profit from it selling at $20. So, I mean, don't don't be sad for me for that decision. Uh, I am now looking at it and going, man, that was stupid. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Could be worse. Um, be closing things out red. Uh, I've also got plenty of calls open, like longer calls open for this thing. Uh, anyways, on the weekly, though, we are underneath the midline of the ATR at uh, 18, 1942. At 1942, the, the more we hang out below that, the more I'm feeling like like that's an area we really need to get above to get out of this, uh, like this funk that we've been in on CleanSpark. And that's going to be entirely up to whether or not they allow us to do it or not. Let's move on to Mara. How is Mara doing? Mara, the weekly, this looks good. Their candle is good. I know they got that wick on top, but that body is tall. And they closed out. Look at how it closed out. Oh, that is beautiful. That is, that is, ooh, that is good. Um, let me zoom right in on that. Let's see this blue line. 
closing above the top wick here from March 25th, as well as the top of the body on this red candle here from March 11th. That is beautiful. I really like that on Mara. Mara looks like it's ready to go. Uh, Mara was such a boring, boring play all the way since March, and it's just been like fuddling around between $23 and $15, and it finally is showing life. Honestly, ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Also, the last few times, uh, we went up in the last three times we had a run up on Mara. We went up above the top of the ATR bands back here in July 2023. We did it in December 2023. We did it and twice in February we did that. So if we do that again, we will likely see ourselves well into the $30 range. We'll probably take out this high here from $34. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this at like $38, $40 here in a couple of weeks, especially with these catalysts on the horizon that we have for Mara with, with the three that I mentioned earlier in the video. Yeah, I, I like this close. I like this close a lot. We have clearly gotten out of this, this structure down here that has been holding us back. We're clearly breaking away from that. We are in the upper half of this large ascending channel here. And we I mean, we could back test it at 23, 28, something like that, and still be in the upper half of this ascending line here, this ascending channel, and it the, the top of the ascending channels up here at the a, uh, the top of the ATR. But notice we have broken out of this ascending channel on a couple of occasions on the way up. So I mean, again, I wouldn't be surprised to see this at thirty-eight dollars or so, and in, in like by mid-August before it comes crashing back down to you know to like twenty-six bucks or something. Uh, so be aware that 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 could likely happen just like the last every time it ever ran. Uh, but we could be seeing ourselves up there. And I think I will be looking for an entry on uh, calls again for Mara here very, very soon. Uh, now that's all I got to say about Mara. What about Riot? How is Riot doing? Riot, same exact, same exact gameplay as, uh, as Mara. Exact same situation here. I don't even need to make a comment about this, except that I don't think it will go outside of the top of this descending channel. I think it will hit 16, 16.50, maybe $17 at a high on here and then come crashing back down for Riot. That's, uh, but exactly the same setup as Mara. It was boring, 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 boring. It broke out of its resistance area here, out of this area of uh, uh, accumulation. It's broken away from it and it will be moving up from there very likely. Uh, and like I said with CleanSpark, it's gonna do that as well. If CleanSpark allows them to do that, if they stop diluting, it will also run. Uh, let's take a look at Iren. Iran is printing a red candle on the week here. Not as good looking as the others. I'm assuming that some of the non huddle crew is going to look less good than the huddle crew. On the RSI, we broke beneath the signal line. We are heading for the 50 RSI on that. And if we were to do that, I would say that we're probably likely going to hit that 967 level, probably that $8 level. Uh, maybe it might only hit 867. Like I'd buy some at 860. I ain't even lying. Let me let me go ahead and do this. Do 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 867. Yes, please. Let me put a line on 867 because that is another area I want to watch. Let me put this. Let me make this like a wintry green. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd like to see it get anywhere in the in anywhere between anywhere between these three lines. Anywhere between those three lines, I will start buying if it shows strength. Uh, right now though, I am seeing this as a potential area where. It is doing a distribution right here. So this is all distribution. This is classic distribution. And I think it will likely come back down for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, and then curl back up. I mean, the fact that it uh, did so badly on a week that Bitcoin was doing really well uh, shows that this is a distribution zone for larger players, larger investors in this stock. They felt as though a run up of, let's get a, let's get a look, see that it, they felt that a run up of 283% since uh, May in, in 90 days was plenty for them. And they are selling this thing back down where they will, they will reaccumulate, maybe uh, starting from my areas here. Uh, so that's what I'm watching for Iron. I'm not saying Iron's over forever. I'm saying that this 300% run in 90 days, probably going to see a little more sell off here before we start falling back up again on it. Um, uh, let's see, Corzy. I don't even know what to say about Corzy on a weekly chart. It's just an ascending channel that they often break to the downside, but maybe it won't. I have no idea what's going on with Corzy. I don't even know why I bring it up on the weekly. <laughs> we'll keep talking about it until it starts doing something. Uh, we are way outside of the ATR. The, the highest ATR band is at 879. The mid one is at 623. I'm not interested in Corzy unless it touches that mid, uh, that mid ATR band. If it doesn't touch the mid ATR band, I'm really not interested in it. Uh, I think it's too crazy and too risky for me 
personally. If you're making money off of it, I mean, that's awesome. Congratulations to you. I'm happy for you. I cannot participate in this off of my rules. My rules say that it is too expensive right now. And unless I see something like that, there has to sh be some sort of showing, some sort of proof to me that I'm not taking more risk than I should. Uh, and this chart just looks like I'm taking too much risk right now. Now, this does, I will say, I will say, this does look decently flaggy. Like if it were to come back down to like 922 and then do a bounce, that would be pretty nice. That, that, would, that would probably, probably see this thing move up another leg, maybe even to like 15 or $16 range. If we saw it come back down to this area here where we saw these, this little grouping of candles where we've got a couple of wicks closing, uh, you know, closing in on that 920 range, that area. If we were to bounce there, ooh, that would be nice. That'd be nice. And that would also be ending up being the top of the ATR bands on the weekly. If it ends up being that top red ATR band and they bounce off of it, it bounces off. Ooh, that'll be, that'll be really good. That'll be really, that'd be quite perfect. Actually, uh, Wolf. How's Wolf doing? Wolf printed a doji at the top of the move. Wow. I think this is the same situation. I think Wolf is likely, I mean, it's way outside of the ATR bands. It did a run-up of, let's see, since since May, again, since en the end of May, not even the beginning, end of May, not even 90 days. It ran up 243%. And I'm telling you, the institutions that accumulated down here between one and three dollars, those institutions. 250% in 80, you know, less than 90 days. That is a wicked win for them. And I promise you they'll be taking some of that there and probably drive it back down somewhere in between the red and the yellow band here, somewhere between, you know, 491 and 340, somewhere in there. And then reaccumulate probably at a slightly higher level, much like uh, if you remember the CRISPR chart. Like, I mean, okay, so it looks like this, right? Similar to here, right? This was accumulation. Ran up came down a bit, ran a big, came down way, way big, accumulated slightly higher than before, did another run up, came back down, accumulated slightly higher than before, did a big run up. Now we're going to come down and we're going to accumulate somewhere slightly higher than before, before another run up. I mean, it's just the same. They're running the same play over and over and over again. Uh, it's just up to us to be patient enough to wait for them to play out and come into our hands versus us feeding our money into theirs. That, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Uh, now, what else do we got? We got Hut. Let's take a look at Hut. Hut, honestly, very similar to Wolf, except this, this candle body looks really good. I don't know why Hut won't stop. Hut just won't stop. Hut, I mean, it even printed this nice green candle on the weekly way outside the ATR bands. It looks like it wants to go over at this high at 22.85. I, I know that's a bit different from what I was saying for Wolf, but man, this thing just doesn't want to quit. Um, it's not even showing any red in here at all. Now, what I do see is potentially coming back down to the midline of the Fib Bollinger Bands at 690 or 692, which would be the top of the ATR band there. I think that would be a very similar move to like what I think Core Z could do, where it comes down, taps off of that line, uh, the, the top of the ATR, and then continues on for a bit before starting to lose steam and finding itself, you know, back down back down at something like, you know, 1650 or, you know, even uh, $13 and, and starting that accumulation cycle at the $13 level for the, you know, for the Q4 run here sometime in October. Uh, that's what I'm looking for on HUT there. Uh, and I think that's all the ones I want to cover today. I said in the previous video that I wasn't going to be covering Cypher anymore because uh, that was just too risky for me when a company is looking to sell itself. I don't think anything is really going to come out of it until they get an offer and we see, you know, how much do other companies think that it's worth. So I'm not looking at Cypher anymore, which means I will not be looking at the Cypher warrants any longer either. And with that said, that's all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, check out the Trade Cave store on Etsy, link in the description, as well as in the channel bio and have a profitable day.